Hi everybody. Um, we're back and we're working on the Finn mask. Now I left Finn for a long time wrapped in plastic but um, I was working on the human mask. Now I'm coming back to the Finn mask and the Finn mask has started to dry out. He's gotten quite quite hard leather. So the first thing I did is I went ahead and I pulled all that newspaper out and I went in and I filled any cracks and crevices and tried to get this as secure as I could. I then worked some more on the front. Um, I started working on the nose and the jaw and every time I tried to do something he just kept cracking because he's just too hard. So what I'm going to do, um, I've got a pretty nice frame on this, but I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to finish off this framing this um, so that I can get this secured. And then I'm going to dunk the whole thing in water, wrap it really tight in a plastic bag, and I'm going to just let it sit for a while. And I wanted to bring this up to you guys because I know you guys are probably going through much of the same thing. Um, you're working from home. You've got a lot of stuff going on. And maybe your pieces are sitting there and, um, you know, you've lost your workability. Well, you can get that back. As long as there's still water in the clay, you can rehydrate it. I'm taking, I've got this um, really kind of nifty scoring tool, which is awesome, um, which I know most of you don't have. So I'm going to switch over to my sure form, which a lot of you do have. And a lot of these sure forms have that really great edge. So if you've got that sure form, this is great. Um, what I have here is my um, slip. And I'm dipping it in the slip and I'm scoring with slip on here. So I'm really driving a lot of moisture down into this really, really hard, hard leather clay. Um, to try and activate it, get it sticky again, so I can go ahead and add some more clay to it which is what I'm going to do right now. This is a great time actually to be doing it before I go in and do any more. Let me see if you can see him. Before I go do any more work on the face where I'm going to be handling, because this backside, as I'm handling this backside, a lot of times I end up boogering up stuff on the face. So if I do this now, I get this over with, I'll have this whole backside refined, and then I can go ahead and work on the face and um, not be turning him over and and um, undoing all the good work that I'm doing on the front side. So I'm adding this nice big thick coil of clay because like I said I want to frame this out. I'm going to keep this part here. I kind of like that look on him and um, I just think that's going to look really nice up on a wall when I hang it. Um, on If you followed the human mask um, at the same time I framed up the human mask, I went ahead and I put the hanging hardware on it. Um, I'm not going to do that with the fin mask right now. And um, the reason being, with this one, I'm going to be adding a lot of fur on here, which I think is going to make it kind of thick and heavy. And so I'm going to wait. I'm going to frame it. But um, I suspect I want to go back in later and pull a bunch of clay from the back out to thin this mask down a little bit. So I don't want to put anything across here now that's going to um, impede my access to that. And um, as I start adding for, you know, even the, this frame might change a little bit. Um, so this is to stabilize it as I continue to work on it. But it's no means, by no means is this the end of the work I'm going to be doing on the back side of this mask. So I'm going to hold off making any other structural decisions for now until I get further into the constructing of the front of the mask and see if that changes or informs any of my decisions on how I want to finish up the back. Okay, I'm going in here. I know it's hard to see, but I'm really, I'm securing it on the inside. I'm securing it on the outside. I'm getting rid of any seams so that you can't tell where I added that on. Okay. Nice and secure. See here, I'm going to go ahead and roll that too. Any kind of separation where I added this that's just an invitation to, for it to go right to that spot and crack I'm going to show you here as I pulled on that this cracked open this is the issue I'm having with this mask because it's just too dry so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to repair that crack I'm going to open it up a little bit throw some slip down in there okay I'm going to throw a coil in there 
Okay, compress it, back and forth over it, close it back up, and then I'll go over it with a rib, and that should hold it for now. All right, so here's Finn so far. Um, and I'm going to get him wet, let him sit. I'll come back and I'll add on some more to this video as this progresses. Okay, we're back. We're working on Finn some more. Um, I worked a lot on building out this part of his face and making it bigger, um, getting the proportion of this to the mouth um, correct. I showed you the nose last time. I also added his little tongue sticking out and I made the tongue and then I pushed it through from the inside, which is also how I do teeth. Once I open up the mouth, I lay teeth in from the backside. So if you decide to do teeth, I usually just put a bar of clay in there, tops and bottoms, and then I go in and um, from the front and carve out the detail of the teeth. But I lay the teeth in as a whole bar of clay first. You don't want to try, unless you were working big, then you would maybe want to place teeth in individually. But um, at this scale, that would just be too much work. So I push the little tongue through and I'm working on the eye and I'm doing his eye differently than a human eye. Um, Finn just happened to have these very small little, um, very round eyes. Um, they're very, almost like a doll's eyes. They were just like little button eyes. Let's see if I can get a picture up here. See how cute he had just these little teeny tiny round eyes and a very flat face. Um, so like my other dog, Rory, he is a miniature poodle and he has a very long face and very human eyes and the eyes um, wrap around his head more, his face isn't as flat. Um, so that's the difference between them. So I'm doing this eye a little bit different and I wanted to share that with you. So, I'm going to see if I can get this on the camera. It's going to be hard for me to do it right side up. But with this eye, I just make a little bit of a slit. And then I take, so, oh my gosh, I don't know how you're going to see this. I'm going to take, yeah, pretty good. And I'm just going to push a little bit of the clay up with the eyelid. And then down with the bottom eyelid. And I need to make it match the other eye. And then I'm going to go in here with my knife and I'm going to round what's left in there to give them kind of those really nice round little um, eyes that he had. So I don't construct it the same way if you watched the video on the human eye. Um, I did that where I constructed the eyelashes. He's getting there. I constructed the eyelash, the eyelashes. You can't do eyelashes in clay, by the way. Um, they're too fragile, they just fall off, unless it was very giant or you're doing like really outlandish eyelashes, you might get away with it, but that's a pretty hard technical feat to do eyelashes, so I've never done eyelashes. Anyway, what I'm doing now is I'm using my knife and I'm just going in and rounding that eyeball and deepening the socket that it's in. And then I'm going to take and I'm going to just soften this lid, top and bottom. I did it over here. Now, he's going to have a whole lot of fur around this. I just smashed that. I can see that in the video. He's going to have a whole lot of fur around this and that, it always disguised his eyes. When he would get really furry, we'd be like, I can't even see your eyes, buddy. Um, and that happens to be, you know, his breed. All dogs are different. A lot more variety in dogs than I think there are in human faces. Okay, I'm just going to make that a little bit rounder. Okay, so here I'm at with Finn. Um, I've got a basic eye. I did pretty good on the nose. The mouth I'm happy with. The tongue is good. Now this little guy needs some ears. Okay, ears. Let's talk about what's going on here. I took um, two slabs of clay. I rolled out a slab, I cut an ear shape, then I laid that on top of the other slab and I used it to trace my ears. So I started off with two ears that were similar. Um, and he had these really kind of interesting forward facing ears. Of course, all dogs have ears are different. So it took me a minute to kind of figure out how all of that works and I'm still refining it. But I did want to show you in the back, 
Um, I, they're attached along the top. With each of them, I tacked a little bit underneath, and I'll go in, and I'm going to throw a coil behind there on both ears to stabilize the ear. And then also, you can see I started on this one um, with a slab of clay attaching this part of the ear. This is all going to go up against a wall, and nobody's going to see it, but I want to make sure that that ear is stable, and it's, going, it's not going to break off. It's not going to form any cracks. It's not going to slump in the firing. So I'm building kind of this infrastructure to hold that ear in place. All right, so I'll give you a little bit. Here we go. There's Finnegan. And um, what I did off camera is I took, I used my um, scratchy tool that I have, and you could use, um, you know, a Sureform edge or whatever else you can find. But I, I did the thing where I dip it in the slip and then score the whole thing. Now, for Finn, I don't want to spend um, a ton of time making hair or fur. So I'm just going to take handfuls of gloppy wet slip and I'm just going to put it over that scratch texture that I did. And I'm going to just do it very fur-like using my fingers as I go. This is going to rehydrate this um, so after it's set up a little bit I'm going to um, Go, I'm going to let it sit out till this gets uh, kind of a, a matte sheen on it. So it just sets up a little bit. But take a look at that. So I'm going to do that all over his face. I'm going to let that set up to where it's just dry enough that I can bag it. And then um, I'll bag it up, let it sit overnight, and then I'll come back tomorrow. Um, it's going to pass that moisture back and forth and back and forth. And I'm going to see what that fur looks like tomorrow and see if I want to add some embellishments to that. All right, I, after I applied all that slip, I took this little dollar store paring knife and I just started dabbing it into the fur and I'm going in different directions to kind of create an interesting texture. Make him look like it's more fur-like, but not too hyper-realistic. Um, just more of the idea of the texture and the layers of the fur. Let me lift him up here. Let you see. So actually that's where I'm at for tonight. Um, I couldn't quit messing with him. So I'm gonna go ahead now and leave him alone. And as I said before, I'm gonna let him sit overnight and I'll come back in the morning and see what I think.